Hey guys, Drifter here, and welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the SC-2010 Assault Rifle, and you're going to notice that my gameplay is markedly better, because instead of using pistols only, or riot shield, or LMGs, or something goofy, I'm actually going to get to use Assault Rifles, which is the ideal weapon class for this game. And before we jump into the nuts and the bolts of the SC-2010, I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about the Ultimate Utility, or the Ghost Ultimate Utility, by Brass Monkey Apps. He's the guy that helps me make the Ask Drifter app, and I work with him on this app to make sure that the weapon stats are good. But anyway, this is an app that has all of the weapon stats that I'm going to be doing all year for in-depth, kind of already pre-made and in graphs and in a nice little comparative order here. It has a gun comparison chart, it's got a hitbox chart, a lot of little neat things for all of you that are interested in gun stats, and if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you are. I've got links to it down in the description, both for Android and iOS, and if you're interested in that, you can go and download it, and if you do bother to download it, when you boot it up, be sure to enter code DRFT to let people know who sent you, lets them know that I'm a good sponsor and that I'm worth keeping around, and that's about it for the app pitch. Let's jump into the stats of the SC-2010. The SC-2010 is a somewhat low damage assault rifle that compensates for the low damage in other ways. The damage is 35 in close quarters combat, and it maintains that 35 damage up to a pretty good range. I'm going to say up to about medium to long range engagements. It still maintains that, but at very long ranges, it'll drop off to a 20 damage weapon, and that's going to mean that it is three to five shots to kill for you, depending on how far away you are. More often than not, you're going to be in the three and four shot kill range. Headshots are 1.5x damage, and this is generally going to ensure one less shot to kill at most ranges. And uh, the ranges are specifically are for the three shot kill range 24 meters. This is the range at which most of your submachine guns are already doing their minimum damage with this weapon you still have three shots to kill and your four shot kill range which I would call the consistent kill range is 35 meters this is pretty normal range for assault rifles it's definitely not the lowest and definitely not the highest medium of the pack the base damages are a little bit low again 35 and 20 most of the other ones are more like 45 49 and 24 so this one is a little bit weaker when punching through objects compared to other assault rifles it shoots slightly faster than most of the assault rifles in the game at 750 rpm this is the same rate to fire as the MSMC or PDW from Black Ops 2, or the MTAR for that matter, and this is a good rate of fire because of the way the coding works and the way it rounds numbers and the way you get your variations you will probably have the least amount of rounding errors with 750 RPM, so this will have the most consistent rate of fire across all of, uh, situations for you, and that's a very technical thing, but you probably won't have to worry about that too much, and I would note that it is slightly higher than other ARs. Again, one of the ways that this assault rifle compensates for its moderate rate of fire, well, slightly higher than average rate of fire, but low damage, is that its recoil is low to moderate. It's not the lowest recoil assault rifle, but it is rather low recoil, and if you were to put a foregrip on it, it definitely would be low. The moderate, I would add that some in you know, long ranges, it kicks up a little bit. It's a little bit harder to stay on track, and you might want to aim with the feet and wait for it to kick up to the head. But again, with a foregrip, this won't be a problem. Aim down sight time is standard for the assault rifle class at 0.3 seconds. This is actually a slower aim down sight time than previous Call of Duty games. There are no assault rifles that do faster or slower than that, so it's kind of an irrelevant statistic, but it is faster than light machine guns, but slower than submachine guns when it comes to aiming down sights. Reload time is a little bit slow on this one. It takes 2.8 seconds to reload if you are completely empty. If you have some bullets left in the magazine, it takes 3.3 seconds to reload. I'm not sure why it is this way. And the reload cancel time is 1.67 seconds, so the reload cancel time is definitely beneficial to you, and if you can, always reload cancel, because it's going to cut your reload time in half. Magazine size, pretty standard for assault rifles at 30. Extended mags is plus 50% ammunition, so that's going to take you up to 45. That's also going to increase your base starting ammunition, which isn't a bad idea for this one. You'll burn through your bullets pretty quickly if you're like me, because I like to hose. When it comes to the iron sights, I'm going to say that the iron sights are not ideal, but they're still usable. This is usually the part of the in-depth where everybody disagrees with me. They are a little bit blocky on the bottom, and if the weapon kicks too much, I can accidentally cover up my whole target and lose track of them, but they're clear enough to be used at close range very easily, clear enough to be used at medium range, and the iron sights only really suffer in long range engagements, but with most assault rifles in this game, I see people putting on sights almost all the time anyway. Not a lot of, you know, iron sight assault rifle fans out there, so it won't be such a big deal. If I had to describe the SC-2010 in a very short and concise way, and I kind of do because this is in depth and this is the part where I describe the assault rifle, I would say that it is a very middle of the pack assault rifle. This is a sort of rough and tumble assault rifle. 
it works in all situations and that's a good thing and a bad thing it's a good thing in that this weapon has no clear weaknesses there is not really a downside to using the SC 2010 or not a major one for that matter but it also doesn't have any major strengths it's it's a very sort of um, unambitious gun is the word that I would use it'll work in every situation but it is the best gun for no situations the lack of strengths is something that I am normally not attracted to I'm usually going for you know quirkier weirder kind of guns but if you want an all-purpose assault rifle that will not fail for you that will not put you at a disadvantage that won't kick too much or too little that won't shoot too fast or too slow or anything like that the SC 2010 might be the right one for you and rightfully so because it is the first assault rifle unlock in the game and it's a very good one to learn to use compared to all the other their assault rifles that are more specialized. The two perks that I can guarantee you will be useful on this weapon are quick draw and ready up. Quick draw of course so that you can aim down sights quicker because the aim down sights time on assault rifles in this game is a little bit slow for my taste and I appreciate being able to do it in closer to 2 seconds instead of 3 seconds or my bad 0.2 seconds instead of 0.3 seconds. That is a lifesaver. It doesn't save sound like a whole lot of time but the faster you can aim down sights the faster you can put uh, bullets on target accurately. Ready up is a perk that I rarely play without because I feel it's necessary to recover from sprinting quickly because if I sprint a lot but if you're a camper if you don't sprint a lot if this is not valuable to you you may not need it uh, most notably not on this list is stalker uh, I use stalker as a crutch in MW3 I kind of had to have it in every weapon and in this game stalker is banned in competitive play and since I'm on team envious I'm trying to learn competitive play a little bit more and trying not to get too many crutch perks like ready up so stalker is not one of my recommended perks not because I hate it but not because I'm trying not to get addicted to it you'll see in the silencer gameplay in this episode I actually did have stalker clips stalker is a good perk it works great on this assault rifle it works great on most assault rifles but for this one in particular I don't believe that it's 100% necessary there are other assault rifles that I, I am a big fan of stalker on and I think that it's great and that you'll love it this one I think that you could easily play without stalker the attachments that I found to be the most useful uh, the most useful attachments in general was just the red dot sight and the foregrip or red dot sight and muzzle brake but for this assault rifle I found the foregrip to be more beneficial than the muzzle Muzzle brake, red dot sight, tried and true for assault rifles, that's a combination you can't beat those last two. But I also found the thermal sight to be very useful, uh, the variable thermal so I could swap back and forth between the open circled uh, dot sight and the thermal. But I only found that to be useful on very large maps, kind of like on Stonehaven, which is what the gameplay is from. So if you're going to play on a large map, don't be afraid to put the thermal on it. The thermal is more than accurate enough for you to get very long range kills and spot some enemies that you wouldn't spot. And you can always swap back over to the dot sight, which is nice and clear and pretty. I use the tracker site, I use the EOTech site, they're not very beneficial. Uh, in, the, in the tracker site gameplay you see that I also use the shotgun attachment and this is one that I'll mention on occasion but not the noob tubing attachment. The shotgun attachment was surprisingly beneficial because as I mentioned earlier in this episode it is possible to shoot somewhat too fast and burn through your 30 rounds and when that happens you have to reload which you would want something like sleight of hand to reload quickly or you need to be safe to reload or if somebody rushes you while you're reloading you can spam them with your undermount shotgun and kill them and that works very very well. Well guys that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode, which is on the Broken Riot Shield animations, you can click on the box on the left, that'll open it in a new window. If you'd like to check out the next episode, that's going to be the SA-805, which is a more specialized assault rifle. You can click that box, and that'll open whenever it's live. Again, the Brass Monkey Ghost Ultimate Utility is linked down there in the description, both for iOS and Android, and if you do end up downloading that, please use code DRFT. That's important to me to prove that I am a good and worthwhile sponsor, and as as always, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.